What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have the Roar Mantis and the Talaria Sting R. We're gonna be doing a good old fashioned game of top trumps. We have 10 categories. We're gonna rank each bike in each category. We're gonna tally up the score and see if the Sting R can stay top dog. Stay tuned for more videos on the Mantis. We're gonna be ripping it off road later. Alex, what's our first category? Let's get into the price. Okay guys, Talaria Sting, $4,500. Roar Mantis, $5,000. So, tally goes to Sting R. All right guys, our next category is top speed and drag race. Okay, the Sting R, we've gotten it to go just over 50 miles an hour on our GPS computer. We're not talking about the display. GPS computer, over 50. Now, the Roar, we've only been able to get it to go 39 miles per hour on that same GPS. The display shows 49 when we did that. Now, Roar advertises all over the place that this bike can go 45 miles an hour. We haven't been able to do that. Now, let's move on to the drag race. We're gonna switch to a drone shot. Let's see who wins. All right, guys, it's time for the drag race. We've got the Stinger on the right, the Roar Mantis on the left. Both bikes are at 100%. We just rolled them out of the garage. You guys ready? Ready. Okay, here we go in three, two, one, go. Holy cow, that Stinger is smoking the Mantis. Look at that, it is gone. That Sting R absolutely crushed the Mantis. So that point is gonna go to the Sting R. All right guys, as you saw in that race, the Sting R whooped its butt on that drag race and it also beat its top speed. So we're gonna give that point to the Sting R. All right guys, our next category is the stock tires that come on these bikes. And we're gonna give this point to the Raw Mantis and we'll tell you why. This front tire is skinny but has bigger knobs than what come on the stock Solaria Sting. And this back tire is much wider and also has bigger knobs. So it's gonna do way better off-road and be way more durable. So that point is gonna to go to the Roar Mantis. Now our next category is battery size. And this is a big one, right? Like this is one of the most important things that you look for in these electric bikes. The Sting R comes with a 60 volt, 45 amp hour battery which is the biggest of this class of e-bikes that we've seen. Now, this Mantis comes with the same 60 volt battery, but only 35 amp hours, which is a big chunk smaller. That's like 25% smaller capacity. So we'll have to see how the range compares, but we're gonna give this point to the Sting R. All right, guys, our next category is the weight of these bikes. The Talaria Sting R weighs 145 pounds. That's pretty good weight for all that it has to offer. The Roar Mantis weighs 165 pounds, and that is a pretty big difference. So we are gonna give this point to the Talaria Sting R. All right guys, our next category is how hard is it for you to get your hands on either of these bikes? If you guys have tried to order a Talaria Sting R right now, you'll know it's pretty hard. Everywhere is back ordered all over the US and the dealers haven't really gotten their bikes yet. So they might become more available in the future, but right now it's pretty hard to get. The Roar Mantis, they've done a better job at managing the supply and you're able to pick these up at lots of dealers around the US. So it's way easier to get a Mantis right now. So we're gonna give the point to Roar. The next category is upgrade options. Okay, the Sting R has been around for a little over a year and there's already a ton of aftermarket parts that you can buy for this bike. You can do batteries, controllers, like everything you can think of. Now, the Roar Mantis is a newer bike and so it doesn't have as many upgrades available. Not as many aftermarket product makers have made options for this bike yet. So we'll have to see if that changes in the future, but right now the Sting R has way more upgrade options, so we're gonna give the point to it. All right guys, our next category is gonna be displays and modes that you can put these bikes into. Let's look at the R really quick. So we've got this little egg rider style display. You've got your mile per hour. You can also change your regen four levels with these buttons right here. You've got sport mode and eco mode right here. You can also go into your settings and look at your battery cycles. You can look at your battery amp hours. A lot of good stuff that is actually really useful. You have just a basic start button here once you turn the key and then you're ready to go. Now, 
When we picked up the Roar, we thought it was gonna win easily in this category. Cause you can see we've got this big display here. It has your miles per hour in the middle. It's got your mode, sport mode or eco mode. It's got your trip and your battery display. But you can't change any settings on here. And we're finding that the speedometer, like we said earlier, is nearly 10 miles an hour off. So even though you get a bigger display, it's easier to read, what good does that do if your mile per hour is 10 off? That's literally useless. I've got our modes right here. We've got three eco modes and a sport mode plus reverse. Now more modes usually is better, right? But we find that we're only using the most powerful eco mode and sport. The other eco modes are just way too slow. They have no torque. So we think it's better to just have the simplicity of the two modes that the R has. It's just more simple for the rider. Okay guys, we've got a nice headlight set up here. We actually have high beams and low beams, which is super cool. We also have a turn signals so that you can add to this bike. And then you've got your horn switch right there. One thing I forgot to mention on the Sting R is that you can actually go into this display and you can go in and you can change your gear modes for if you do an aftermarket sprocket change. That will make your speedometer more accurate based on what size you do. Now the Mantis doesn't have that. Like I said, the speedometer is just off and it's gonna be even more incorrect if you change your sprocket, which a lot of people do on these bikes. And that leads me to another point. So we actually called Roar because we got this bike, we've been riding it for a couple days and none of the specs that they list on their website are actually adding up on this bike. The top speed, we can't reach it. The zero to 30 time, not even close. And and so we called them and we were like, are we missing like a more powerful sport mode or something that actually makes this bike do what you guys are saying? They said, no, it's got the three eco modes, it's got the sport mode, the display can't change. So I don't know, that's kind of just not a great thing to sort of lie to your customers about all the specs that the bike is supposed to do when it really can't. They do have an update coming that is supposed to make the throttle feel better and it's gonna disconnect some of the safety features like the brake sensors and the kickstand. But that's not supposed to fix all these other things. It's not supposed to give it more power. And we got this info directly from Roar. We actually asked them all these questions. They gave us the speed it was supposed to go. So that's gonna be points down for Roar and points up for the Sting R because they're very open about their specs. And we've been able to achieve every spec that they've said. So that this point, we're gonna call it a draw but really, we think that the Sting R should win, but I think it's gonna come down to a little bit of perf personal preference on the buttons and the displays. All right, guys, next we're gonna do the brake test. Okay, so the R has better brakes than the Sting MX-3. It has larger rotors and they do feel more powerful. But the Roar advertises that they have moto-style brakes on the Mantis. So we're gonna go do a brake stop test from 25 miles an hour and we're gonna see if they really are better than the Sting R. Let's go. All right, guys, stoppy test, Sting R. That was a pretty good stop. Okay, we're gonna mark it right there. All right, Sting R. Okay, time for the Roar Mantis. We gotta hurry, because we got a street sweeper coming. Okay, guys, for these stop tests, we're going 25 miles an hour on each bike, GPS, stopping at this line. Here's the Mantis. All right, that look at that. Pretty good. This one breaks harder, you can definitely feel it. So that's a whole bike length, guys. Let me draw a line here so you guys can see. All right. There's the R, there's the Mantis. These pretty much. have a lot more power. Yeah, Roar advertises more moto style brakes. Mm -hmm. They're not really huge moto brakes, but they are better than the R. So we're gonna give that point to the Mantis. All right guys, our last category is gonna be suspension on each of these bikes. Our Sting R came with the Talaria factory fork and the Talaria factory rear shock. Our Roar Mantis has KKE suspension front and back. Let's talk about it. So we have had this bike actually for five days and we've already put it through its paces quite a bit. We've taken it off road, we've done a lot of street riding. And at first we thought the suspension felt really good on the road. We thought it was pretty plush and cushioned the bike well, but in getting off road, it was sort of a different story. We think that the Sting R has a much more supportive and better feeling front fork than this bike. We think this fork's a little soft and doesn't quite handle the weight that this bike is. Moving to the rear shock, that's where our bigger issue comes. So we have a single pivot suspension design here. And that means that on this shock, we were actually noticing a pretty big clank and a drop sound 
when you'd actually jump or unweight the bike enough to have that suspension drop. And that's a pretty big issue because over time, you're gonna keep overextending that shock and it's gonna lower the lifespan of that suspension. The Sting R has a much more complex linkage and it actually has a linkage here that is bottom out protection. And so when you drop this suspension, like on a jump, it doesn't clank and it doesn't overextend your shock, which is gonna prolong the life. So we're gonna give this point to the Sting R. All right, guys, thanks for watching so far. As you've seen, the Sting R won the points category and we feel in this test, it is top dog. But we've been riding the Roar Mantis off-road and we're gonna take it out again and we're gonna take you guys with us and we're gonna go through how it feels out on the trail. We're gonna put it through jumps, single track, dirt road riding. We're gonna really put it to the test. So stay tuned for that video. Don't forget to subscribe, guys. We have tons of e-bike content and we really appreciate you guys watching. We'll catch you next video. See ya.